Hello, everyone. My name is Adel Korkor, and I'm the founder and the CEO of the AV Korkor Foundation for Mental Health. Well, uh, on my 70th birthday, uh, I try to make things easy for me. Uh, I, on my 70th birthday, I, I decided that, uh, uh, that I would like to have a challenge that is to raise $70,000. But how I was going to do that is to actually run 70K. As you all know, the AB Corker Foundation is centered around raising awareness, uh, removing the sigma, and enforcing the role of physical exercise in mental health. Well, running was my passion and still is. So I decided I'll go ahead and do 70K uh, for my 70th birthday and raise at least $70,000. And that's where the 70, 70, 70 came from. Uh, well, when we decided to go ahead and embark on this process, a few weeks before that, I twisted my foot and had a foot fracture. Big disappointment, big disappointment, big disappointment. Well, I was so fortunate to have, uh, to find a, a gentleman uh, who became a very good friend, uh, uh, Chris Trismeyer, who decided to do the whole run for me. Well, we had a, a wonderful gathering and uh, uh, on that day, uh, in uh, September of, uh, uh, of that last year during the pandemic. And uh, we end up having the event uh, in person with more than 30 people participating. But reason why we're here today is that the, uh, the money that we have raised was purposed to support the mental health of frontline workers. We all know the challenges that these individuals had during the pandemic, whether they are grocery worker, healthcare providers, um, or uh, 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 postal delivery uh, uh, individual, uh, or for that matter, uh, uh, military as well as uh, as as well as uh, 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 policemen and, and firemen, and all of these individuals suffered a great deal of challenges uh, during the pandemic. Well. The money that we raised, fortunately, was way in excess of what we had uh, uh, looked for, and we raised close to $120,000. Uh, and as a result, we have uh, pursued the establishment of several programs that are involved uh, in frontline mental health workers. Well, we took advantage of this event to really produce a documentary about this pandemic. And where else to go to get the help that we need other than the UW of University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee, where the film school is there. We approached the director and we said, you know what, we want to produce a documentary about this event. Uh, and they were more than happy to work with us. And then that's how we got to meet Pamela Westfall. Uh, Pamela is a, a very smart young lady. And we have thoroughly enjoyed working with her during the production of this documentary. Uh, she is a graduate of the UWM uh, uh, Film School, and uh, she really is a documentary film producer. Uh, well, Pamela, welcome. Yeah, thank you so much. It's been so great having you and working on this project. I'm so, I'm so excited to show this. This has really been something that I'm really proud to say that I got to work on. Yeah, tell me, tell me, just tell me quickly how you actually, when you started working on this project, what was the first thing in your mind that you wanted to try to make sure to convey? Yeah, so um, first I want to say a little context for the project. I was approached by um, Sean Kafer at DocUWM. Um, at that time, I was an undergraduate research assistant for DocUWM. Um, DocuWM is a nonprofit or a company that runs through uh, the UW film uh, program, and I really, I really take pride that I was in that program. That program really gave me roots and rings to grow as a filmmaker, and I'm really excited that I got this project. So when I initially started it, um, you know, it's interesting because when you're in the thick of filming something, you're just like, all right, let's capture everything, let's get everything. Let's just hope everything goes okay and like our batteries last and our cards don't run out. Um, <laughs> and but I, what I really remember that day of the run was 
getting to connect with people's stories and getting to connect with um, the real humanity um, that people had shared on camera, whether that was through interviews or on the race day. Um, I think a lot of times with mental health, we try to hide it or we try to disguise it or we try to say it's, oh, it's not there. Like, I'm not anxious about this. I'm fine. I'm not depressed. I'm fine. And so being able to see um, people be really vulnerable on camera was really touching to see. And I wanted to bring um, that authenticity um, to the filmmaking process. Um, so authenticity was kind of where I wanted to go in the first direction. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Let's go ahead and show the film. And, right. and uh, I hope you'll be able to stay with us for some questions and answer at the end. Thank you very right. much. Hey, listen, I'm, I'm calling you to tell you that we're going to have to have a change in plan. Uh, well, well, I actually um, tripped, so we're gonna have, we're gonna have to do something. We're gonna have to do something. I don't know. I think canceling the event is really not an option. Well, I fell right up there, and I just simply I was in my flip flop, and it happened so quickly. It's just hard to believe. Uh, stepped on the rock, flipped, landed on my side. I sat on it for a couple of days. Until one day I just, uh, when I got out of bed, I couldn't even put my foot down. When I realized that there's something more serious than a strain. My name is Adel Corker and I'm the founder and the CEO of the A.B. Corker Foundation for Mental Health. Because it's my 70th birthday, I decided, well, I'm gonna run 70K and raise at least $70,000 to support uh, mental health initiatives in taking care of individuals who are on the front line and essential workers. And that's why I planned to do what I did. And I was very much in, in shape and ready to go to do the 70K, but this fall and the fracture really um, got in the way. Fortunately, there's a, a number of friends of mine who, who are runners, who also are passionate about mental health who decided to step in and, and, and do this event. I, I hope that uh, was what I'm doing and what many other people in, in this country are doing to support that cause, that we can make a difference. Our pandemic started when I was graduating college, so having to figure out that, you know, we're going to start our careers in the nursing field as a, in the whole pandemic, the unknown is very hard to kind of just go in blindly. Um, I guess that we're all kind of ready for that in a way and different things in life, but I don't think a whole world pandemic we were ready for. I'm just running in steed for Dr. Corker who injured his foot. I myself suffer from bipolar one disorder, so when I met Dr. Corker and I found out about the foundation, that's when I started, you know, that's when I became really interested in what this foundation does for people with mental health issues. This is a pandemic of grief, as well as a pandemic of this virus, COVID-19. It's a life-threatening virus, and the definition of post-traumatic stress disorder is to be exposed to something that's life-threatening, and then for it to cause significant ongoing negative effect and anxiety disorder in people. What could you expect better than this beautiful, spectacular days in Waukesha, Wisconsin, um, where the journey is going to only begin? So I'll hobble around and try to do as many, as much as I can. I'm gonna try to do seven miles and, and see if I can do that. But at the end of the day, our goal is to really raise money and raise support. And I hope that we'll be able to do that. On your mark. Get set, go! <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Go. Go. All right. In the beginning of everything, we had our baby in May. From that point on, it was no going out, no, you know, you go to work, go home, go to work, go home, and you're just stuck in that little rut. It's hard to cope with it. I mean, I still am dealing with it. We're still dealing with it. And I mean, the most things that we can do is, you know, family walks, go out, 
get some fresh air. We haven't seen our friends or anybody in all year. In the beginning it was a lot of like FaceTiming and stuff like that. Within my community specifically, I've been fortunate enough to have mental health be kind of at the forefront of like what we speak about um, and to make space for those people. Like, um, it's pretty regular that someone would say, oh, I'm having a bad mental health day. I'm going to need a little bit more patience or, or something like that. When an athlete has enough stress on this plate at work, uh, not being successful, which everybody comes there to be a superstar, an all-star, that could send them into a negative spiral if they don't have, uh, per se, the discipline, the mental discipline to say, you know, I know that certain things are bad, you know, what do I turn? Do I turn to my faith? Do I turn to my friends? And also that does bring up who you have around you. Yeah, I've been fortunate enough to have some good people around and, uh, the stress to try to be the best on every day, along with, you know, just multiplies this year in 2020 with the craziness going on in the streets of the police. Uh, you know, it, it's just compounded now. The world is right now just an uproar. The whole world is an uproar. When I was young, the police were real hard on black, real hard. And then they started lighting up a little bit. And then my little king and all that stuff went through. And it segregated the schools and changed everything. It got a little bit better. Mm -hmm. But in some states a little further down, like Mississippi and Alabama, it's still kind of hard. Good job. Put the leg down. Yeah, good job. Uh, five years ago, I lost my sister to suicide. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was, um, that was a devastating event. Um, and my world has been altered um, in so many ways because of it. And it's not just a personal battle, it's a public battle. Yeah. 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 And with, with the pandemic and what's been happening, I can't imagine the struggles that um, those on the front line are, are dealing with. With every downturn in the economy, we see uh, suicide rates go up. Already in the uh, country of Australia, for example, they've had more suicide deaths than they've had COVID-related deaths. So um, we're just beginning to see that, that, that surge of behavioral health needs, um, and, and then we don't have the sufficient access for people. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I try to focus on three things uh, whenever I'm involved and get board requests. Uh, it has to be one, educational in nature. Uh, secondly, some type of economic development. And the third piece would be able to focus on various exper uh, experiences, being able to educate, to be able to empower, and to be able to just offer resources and alternate methods from what uh, people have seen in their everyday lives. Again, be it with anxiety or depression or coping skills. Again, all of them fall under the umbrella of mental health. I cannot thank you, Chris, enough. This is, has been an incredible journey, I know, for you. It's been painful and long. I can't tell you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. You're welcome. This has been incredible. And I love you all. I love you all very much. Thank you so much. You mean so much to me. At the end of the day, we, we, we accomplished something. We accomplished something really big. But really, in this game of things, it's, it's very, very small. Because what really needs to be done is so much more. There's so much effort that needs to be put in now to be able to stand by those individuals and help them deal with the challenges impacting their mental health caused by this pandemic.
Hello again. I've watched this many, many times. I have to admit that, and, and every time I watch it, it brings me back to that day. That was a, that was a spectacular day. And, uh, and it brings me back to, to the pandemic and how we all felt during that time. And to some extent still do, uh, but I cannot, it, it is always emotional uh, for me. It, 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 when, I, when I see, uh, you know, the, the, the whole event and, and the messages that the individuals had actually, uh, you know, re reflected on, uh, we're still in it. The pandemic is not over. Uh, and, uh, and our mission, you know, and our foundation is not going to be ending anytime soon. Um, well, as you look at the film, uh, I'm going to look and see what are some of the questions that, uh, is there anything you would change about the film if you could? What do you think about that, Pamela? Yeah, so, you know, as I'm like going back and watching it, I'm also kind of reliving the same thing where it was like, wow, I, you know, this was only a year ago, but I feel like so many things have changed. Um, and in terms of like what I would uh, want to change or like um, add in, I kind of wanted to add in like just a couple more interviews. Um, and now that I'm thinking back to it, I'm like, I, yes, we got like healthcare professionals and like those kind of the frontline jobs. But now that I'm thinking about it, I, it would have been great to get just like a couple more of like, you know, grocery store workers or, um, you know, people who work in like the public works sector. So like, you know, sanitation uh, workers, that kind of thing. That would be interesting um, to get just a couple more of those interviews. Um, and then in terms of like, I don't know, editing or something, I feel like it's pretty well edited. I, we had a team for the day of the shoot and then we transferred over to a second team for editing and they really were warriors and putting all of that together and sifting through all the footage we got that day. Um, so I can't thank them enough, uh, for doing that. Um, but I think that's mainly what I would change um, is just kind of adding in a couple more interviews. And it, it, again, it's interesting to revisit it now because it's, it's so different now with the world that has a vaccine in it. You know, I, at that time, I was so skittish to even go near people. And now I'm like definitely more comfortable. But uh. well, maybe, 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 maybe there'll be a time to revisit the same documentary and maybe have a version 2.0. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Pamela, uh, between the team who filmed and those who edited, how many people did it take to put these film together? Yeah, so all those names you saw scroll in the credits, that was how many people it took to put together. We were a pretty small team. Um, I think on the day of the shoot, it was four of us, um, two cameras, one drone, and one audio. And then it was two editors during the fall as we were like getting, and they also helped uh, with those like shorter interviews. Um, and then over the winter break, I kind of did a lot of uh, the final edits. And then we had another person come on and do color um, because color is its own beast. Um, so in total, I wanna say that was around, around like six or seven people, give or take to do this film. Um, so that's about how many people it took. Hmm. Uh, we have a question about whether or not the foundation is looking into another film production. Well, I think I'm going to wait until my 100th birthday. So we're going to do 100K on my 100th birthday. <laughs> <laughs> that, would be, that would be the third one, I think. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> I live that long. Um, uh, I, I think there's always an opportunity. I mean, we, we, we are in a very challenging environment. Uh, mental health is really, uh, for, finally, is really uh, on the front of every, I mean, I'm sure there's not a single day that I pull the news uh, on my newswire that I don't find something related to mental health. So, and we will, are, we will be part of it and we will be continued to immerse and try to do the best we can to help in it. So a documentary will still be in our horizon, I believe. Um, let me see, there are a few other questions. 
Uh, are there any updates on how pandemics have affected mental health? Does this next phase with Delta variant change the dynamics of all? You know, really the answer is uh, from the statistics that I've seen is that uh, the number one suicide rate has uh, increased during the pandemic. Uh, the addiction has substantially increased and the addiction death has substantially increased, especially in certain parts of the United States. Uh, uh, people who, uh, uh, who states that they have uh, depression or anxiety during the pandemic have increased substantially. Uh, estimates have been somewhere in the range of uh, somewhere 30 to 40% of the general public have had that uh, anxiety and uh, the stress associated with it. Uh, so uh, the, the Delta variant is certainly creating enormous amount of additional anxiety and havoc. Uh, now that the schools are open, uh, what I've been seeing and hearing a lot about the anxiety surrounding the parents and how they feel and how they feel about their children being masked or unmasked and also the challenges associated with the teachers and, uh, and, and their exposure and some of them may may not be vaccinated. So I think uh, the challenges with the Delta will continue to be until we reach some sort of herd immunity and we can all get vaccinated or the majority of us get vaccinated. I think we're not going to be able to get out of this um, serious uh, mental, uh, serious uh, uh, healthcare crisis. Uh, the, the film is roughly nine minutes long, uh, but how many hours of film did it take to create these shots? You can answer sure. that one, Pam. Yeah, so I would say, I know that day of the race was around, you know, between pick up equipment, head out, film, come back, upload the footage. That was a good 12 hour day. Um, so, the, you know, I would say we got roughly between, because we would start filming and stop, start and stop. I would say we got four to five hours of footage. Um, and then between the shorter interviews that we did, like little pickups in the fall, um, I would say those in total, those range anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes, depending on the person and how much they talked. Um, so they're about, I want to say five or six of those interviews. And um, we had to cut it down significantly. I think most of them got cut down to like 30 to 45 seconds in the film. Um, so I would say that would probably be about another hour of raw footage. And we also got those interviews at the beginning with you, even before race day. Um, I, that took a couple hours. So anywhere from like, I would say five to six hours worth of footage um, that we've had to go through and kind of cut down a bit um, is kind of my rough estimate. I'm sure um, I could pull up the drive one day and go through all of it, but that's just kind of my rough estimate. Yeah, I found this really fascinating. I've given numerous television interviews in the past, and and I'm really amazing how they can sit and talk to me for like three, uh, you know, thirty minutes, and then whatever it is that they have on the news is seven seconds. And uh, you know, one yeah. one thing on my end, I, I love photography, and I love to take a lot of pictures. I probably take way too many, too many more, you know. And it's hard for me to delete any. It's hard for me because it seems like, you know, I I admire your job because. You know what you do is very difficult and very challenging because you want to try to bring it down uh, to a very concise and still be able to deliver the message. That is a job that I can't do. I, I think it would be very hard for me to do because I look at this as like my children. Who of my kids I have to get rid of? No, no, no. <laughs> you just can't do that. You know. Uh, right. Ab absolutely. It is. It is hard. Um, and eventually you learn along the way, you know, sometimes you kind of go through the footage and you just say to yourself, mm, that's not a good shot. I can't use it. And so then you just got to cut it down. Um, so sometimes it's half of it is weeding out the not good stuff and then finding the good, all the hidden gems in there and then kind of going from there and saying like, okay, how do I make these hidden gems better? Um, and then how can I get them to flow with like the storyline and everything? Um, so yeah. Uh, cutting down is hard sometimes. <laughs> I know. Well, I mean, it looks like you may have a job on your hands in a few years. At 75, they say, why don't you do 75? 
and <laughs> I think I think uh, talking about doing it, doing it relay. Uh, there was a comment here about the accessibility and resources for mental health related problem that has become increasingly difficult. I think what's happening, um, in in my opinion, uh, is that there is so much demand uh, on mental health providers. And I know that uh, like in our community to see a psychiatrist or a psychologist, there's a long waiting period. And that has gotten much worse during the pandemic. And now even after the pandemic, um, I know that telemedicine has starting to uh, strongly penetrate this market and you know, more and more physicians are practicing that way. And uh, allowing the individual to have access to mental health in rural areas and areas that don't have really uh, uh, a sufficient number of, of, of mental health uh, treatments. Um, we on the foundation side are doing the best that we can in funding some of the programs that are actually allowing individuals who are nurse practitioners or PAs to receive mental health certificate so they can go out there in the workforce and deliver the care because psychiatrists are hard to come by and it's more expensive to, to bring into the market, uh, into the care, direct care for patients. So we're, we're proud of what we're doing uh, in, in, in three colleges in Wisconsin, Marquette, UW-Milwaukee, and, uh, Madison, and UW, UW Wisconsin, Madison, and UW Wisconsin, Milwaukee. Uh, so hopefully we'll make a dent to this, but uh, the, 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 the mountain is high and the challenges are big, but, you know, um, I'm, I'm glad to see more funding coming through and, and, and more and more uh, government agencies are actually being better funded from the mental health standpoint. So hopefully we'll see improvement on that end. Yeah, I think what we can do, what can we do uh, as allies to raise awareness on the issue of mental health and also support frontline workers? It's, uh, you know, what do you think? Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes I think what we just need really, um, a lot of times I think when people feel isolated or um, are experiencing mental health, it can't, mental health problems, it can be very isolating. And so I think sometimes it's good to reach out to your friends and say, and not just like, how, oh, how are you doing? Are you doing okay? Okay, that's great. Like actually ask, how are you doing? Um, can I get you anything? Do you, do you want to grab some coffee? Let's go grab coffee together and hang out or let's go on a run together. Um, and I think honestly, just that conversation and reaching out and building of community um, within your community, whether it's your neighbors or your classmates or anyone else, I think building that community and learning to rely on other people or listen to other people um, is always a perk sometimes. And, and it always helps other people out. Mm -hmm. Well, let me add this comment. I had a conversation with a friend of mine who's a, who's a frontline healthcare worker mm -hmm. um, uh, and uh, uh, she's a nurse and mm -hmm. uh, her husband is a doctor. And mm -hmm. they, they said that really the best thing you could do for us is to get vaccinated. Mm -hmm. So I think that the, the, the message that the, health, the frontline healthcare workers is that, you know what, just get vaccinated because that really ultimately is going to impact our work and the safety of the environment that we work in, you know? And I think the same thing applies to, to uh, other frontline workers, whether they are working in a grocery store or delivering or, or, or firemen or policemen, just get vaccinated because that's how you can support them. That's how you can make their job easier and less risky. So let's hope that everybody gets that message, you know, and share it. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Well, the one thing I have to say is that this film uh, is available as of eight o'clock this evening on our YouTube channel. So, uh, so those of you who wants to see it again, they are welcome to, and then they can also pass on the information to others, hopefully to see it and support our foundation and support the work that we do. We really need that moving forward.
www.abkf.org. Uh, let me see, you have a few questions here. Yeah, I completely agree. I think uh, uh, peer support is, uh, is, is, is incredibly important. Um, I think what you just stated, Pamela, is, is, is a clear example of how that can be so helpful. Um, yeah, definitely caring for one another is, is a crucial, you know, it's amazing yeah. what, a, what, a, what a phone call or, you know, word of appreciation and thoughtfulness about someone could do to their life and to how they feel. Um, we're going to try to cut it at 30 minutes. So we're at 731. And uh, thank you, Pamela, very much for what you've done. I appreciate it. You've done a phenomenal job. We're very happy with it. And we hope that there, all of you who have watched it have also enjoyed it and got to really see what we have gone through and what we all are going through with this pandemic. Uh, many thanks for those of you who support us and continue to support us. Many thanks for sharing this uh, film with us and taking the time to watch us this evening. And I hope you have a wonderful, safe weekend and uh, get vaccinated. Yes. Thank absolutely. you so much. Yeah. Thank you all for coming.